Hello, my name is Jude Rhodes. I'm a family and local historian in Yorkshire. Thank you for joining my talk today on Uncemetery, Midden Heaps and Privies, Vets and Sewers. Basically, it's a history tour of human waste, which is very relevant when we look at health and disease. I'm sure many of us are aware of the great stink of 1858. But the stink wasn't just in London where government were up in arms about the smell of the city during the very hot summer of 1858. It was throughout all towns and cities in that hot summer. So what was the cause of the stink? Well, it was heaps, privies, vets and open sewers. It was believed that disease was caused by offensive smells, known as miasma, rather than by the germs lurking within the cause of the smell. In other words, human and other waste. To reduce disease at the time was to reduce the smell. Therefore, this would be to remove the cause, the heaps, the privies, the becks and the open sewers. Four years earlier than the Great Stink, in 1854, John Snow had already linked contaminated drinking water to disease. Contaminate, contaminated drinking water came from heaps, privies, pecks and open sewers. Midden is a manure pile. Archaeologists refer to a midden as a rubbish dump. But in the past, domestic waste was thrown outside onto a pile, such as food waste, industrial waste, and of course, human waste. Robert Burns is reputed to have written a poem about Berwick upon Tweed, including the line, a midden heap in every street. So cesspits and privies. Communal cesspits were deep holes often covered with wooden planks with holes to sit over. So a very primitive toilet, as we can see in the caricature in the corner. Communal privies offered some privacy having a screen or a hut, but I wouldn't find that particularly, you know, private. Bearing in mind that in the overcrowded towns and cities where a privy would be in a yard, many houses would be using just that one same privy. In rural areas, the population managed the disposal of human waste by digging holes in the ground to collect the waste, which then decomposed. In the ever-expanding urban areas, there was insufficient space and human waste often continued to be disposed of in the streets and yards. As cesspits, heaps and privies filled up, the night soil men collected the waste. This must have been a dreadful job for the night soil men, collecting up the waste from the heaps and the privies and the cesspits. The waste in the streets eventually collected in watercourses, or known as open sewers, leading to becks, streams and rivers. The collected waste by the night soil men was also disposed of in rivers. So here we have um, an image of the night soil men um, from the 1700s. And I really can't think of a much worse job than collecting other people's human waste. And off it goes in the distance in the well, travellers with the carts, but all in and amongst the night soilmen with their carts of human waste. There was a pretty grim archaeological find in 2019 when there were renovations of the Courtauld Gallery on the Strand in London. And during the renovations, it unearthed a 15 feet lined pit. The deeper the archaeologists dug, the mud was greenish in colour. You know what's coming, don't you? 
the human waste had decomposed but still emitted a foul smell. In one corner was an 18th century latrine. The findings were that the same site had been used as a toilet and a rubbish dump from the Saxon era to the 18th century. Really quite unbelievable. And if anyone is desperate to see a 3D model of this, there is the web link there. Just search 15th century cesspit 3D model and you will be able to come across this from the archaeologists. So becks and sewers, becks, streams and open sewers. It was common for houses, of, as we have said, to empty their waste and sewage into streams, becks and rivers, especially when the waste was not collected by the night soil men. A sewer was simply a watercourse used for carrying water, but also the waste, which eventually led to the river. Much of the population drew their water from the river, which was used for washing, cleaning, and yes, drinking. The population was drinking the contaminated water. Open sewers often had poor gravity, creating stagnation and blockages occurred. This led to harmful poisonous gases being emitted. So it wasn't just the germs lurking within the waste, but also the harmful gases that was causing the problem for disease. And it wasn't just the crowded yards and streets with their shared privies that was collected and went ended up in the river. People in the larger houses, the wealthier people, had private privies. But as we can see from this drawing, these were built purposefully to empty directly into the river. So all human waste pretty much ended up in the river. As I've mentioned, it was a nationwide problem. And Howarth in Yorkshire, where I'm sure many of you are aware where the Bronte family lived, Patrick Bronte was so concerned about the state of port sanitation that in 1851, he petitioned the Howarth Local Board of Health to set up a clean water sp supply to improve sewers and the streets and regulate premises such as slaughterhouses. In 1849, the graveyard in Howarth was overcrowded and badly drained, seeping into the already poor sanitation. Patrick Bronte realised that prevention of disease was required to stop the spread of cholera from the dirty water. His actions set up the 1850 Babbage Report, which found that no sewer existed to carry off the refuse and de decomposing matter, and that the exposed cesspools are very offensive and injurious to health. So Patrick Bronte was a forward thinking man. In other towns, in the market town of Skipton in Yorkshire, the health inspector's report of 1857 states Springs Canal was described as an open sewer, while a family of 10 lived in just one room in Brown's Yard off High Street, where 10 houses shared just one privy. Life expectation was under 35 years of age. In Yeovil, the contents of the cesspool seeped into the wells. In Leicester, there were only about a thousand usable wells and pumps for 60,000 people and then in, insufficient water to flush the sewers. In Hyde in Manchester in 1862, streets of houses with open cesspools two, four and eight feet deep, nearly full to the top with excrementious waste, urine and other filth. And in Ch Cheltenham, offal and a closet waste and filth from a butcher's shop drained into the sewer. In Whitehaven, in modern day Cumbria, 
the workhouse and the cemetery also drained into Snebra Beck, causing large amounts of excrement in the harbour. And in Cheltenham, as we've mentioned, sewage drained into the river. In the 1870s, Leeds Sanitary Committee started a campaign against the abominable Middenstead and cesspool. The 1875 Public Health Act stated that no excremental waste was to be discharged into watercourses. And by 1902, 85,000 of 100,000 tenants out of a population of 178,000 in Leeds with a water supply had a water closet rather than an earth closet. So it's no surprise that the presence of large quantities of human waste in residential areas led to disease. People were using the waste contaminated water as a drinking water supply. The diseases spread by these unsanitary conditions were typhoid, dysentery, and then in the 1830s, cholera hit towns, cities, and villages. Not until Joseph Bazalgette designed the system of sewers was the end of cholera becoming a possibility. The smells from human waste, industrial waste, and slaughterhouses is unimaginable today. So what is now underground? used to be above ground, leading to disease. So have a think about your place of interest. Have you identified where the becks and sewers ran through? Have you found any privies marked on maps? When were underground sewers built? Have you found any sanitary inspection reports which are fascinating? And when were indoor toilets built in most houses? Thank you for listening. Be thankful for a flushing toilet and clean water from a tap. If you would like a handout and quite an extensive bibliography, please email me at storiesofourgenerations at gmail.com and I'd love to hear your feedback on the All About That Place Facebook page. Thank you.